I'm not paid to be a role model. I'm paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court. There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Yes! Is it the shoes? I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. One of the world's most talented athletes is retiring. It is true what somebody said today. There was Babe Ruth and Muhammad Ali and Michael Jordan and Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky in front. Saved by Flaherty. The rebound. Just threw it perfectly right over him to Corey Bradford. Only Brett Favre could do that. I don't care what you say. This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Game on! Game on! What a weekend in the world of sports. And you want to talk about a perfect lead into the first day of spring? You're kicking it with WHPC Sports Talk here on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Josh Mahi holding it down as your host on this Monday, March 20th. Joined by Eric Williams, Frost Compare, and Ross Levine. How are we doing today, y'all? Mm. Yeah. First day of spring. Pretty nice outside. Pretty nice. I wouldn't say it's you know too nice, but we got some good weather coming up. Yeah, Bronze, how we doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Nick's coming off a big dub. Whew. Joe's cooking. Y'all don't even know for real. He's cooking though. So my organizations are taking the steps in the right directions. I, I can't complain. Joe cooking. Ross, the fellow Giants fan, you feel the same way? Um, yeah, I feel pretty good. I mean, the, the Knicks are playing good, playing good basketball. They're on. They're back on track. And um, and yeah, the Giants are uh, well. The Giants did make some good moves, mm-hmm. so I'm I'm happy. Hey, we've talked. You know, over the past couple of weeks, we've talked plenty of football on the show. We'll see if we can fit it in today, but we got a lot to get to. Of course, you guys brought up the Knicks. They're playing great basketball. Continues. Jalen Brunson came back, made a big impact. We're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about the Brooklyn Nets. Also going to fit in some World Baseball Classic as well. 516-572-7440. That's the number to dial for you to join the show. You could talk about anything semi-sports related. We'll try to uh, oblige you. But, man, it's March. And we haven't really talked enough, in my opinion, college basketball. <laughs> Got to get into it a little bit today. Just a little bit. Because... We had the round of 64, we had the round of 32, we're down to the Sweet 16. The 16 teams left in the tournament, it's all set. I don't even know where to start. Just Well, I know where to start. A Sweet 16 with no Duke, no Kentucky, shoot, no Virginia, no NC. This is, this is ugly. This is ugly, but a good ugly. It's a good ugly. Like, this is a very entertaining March Madness. No Duke, no Blue Bloods, really, like you said. Arizona took a, a bad loss. Yo, that so, was... Uh, who they lose to Princeton. Again? Princeton. I'm going to start with them. Because the Ivy League, they ain't supposed to be here. They ain't. They ain't supposed to be here. They're supposed but, to be hitting the books right now. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be doing anything else but playing high-level college basketball. But they're the 15th seed. They're the lowest seed remaining. We talked about their win against Arizona. They smoked Missouri 78 to 63 in the round of 32. So they're the lowest seed remaining, like I said. Two teams that's really caught my eye. Alabama, obviously. Because mm-hmm. Brandon Miller, that first game against, I don't even know the school. Yeah, it was like some random school. Yeah, some school I don't really care about. But zero points in that first game. They won by like 23. He comes back the next game in the round of 32 this past week and drops 19 points. Another blowout win. So I'm like, they don't really need the one of the top prospects in the draft to take over and dominate. Like, that's a scary team. I'm t- And what people forget is when you look at these games and you look at who's been picking up the slack, it's Javon Quinterly. <laughs> and Javon Quinterly was one of the best guards in SEC basketball just last season and tore his ACL, sadly, in March Madness. So he didn't really get to show people what he was about. But in the regular season, he didn't 
uh, he wasn't that same J- Javon from last year. You know, um, Sears is he's a big time shooter and he's crafty, could get to the basket. So he's been handling a lot of the guard play, and he's probably the best guard on Alabama's roster. But Javon Quinterly has stepped up in these first two games for Alabama tremendously. I think he scored over twenty uh, both games. So people people forgot. People thought he fell off, but when 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 it really counts, March Madness on the way to a national chip. He's showing up, and I'm a big fan of Javon Quinley ever since high school. I, I like his game a lot. Yeah, since high school, I mean, listen, I used to watch his high school tapes, and he was a problem coming out of high school. I just don't know what happened. He went to uh, Villanova. Villanova, yeah, he went to Villanova and then hit the transfer portal and went to Alabama. I just didn't hear nothing from him after that, but I seen what he did the other day, and I was like, mm. yeah, I was tough. He, he, he was always a problem. Like, even that first year at Bama, he had a good season. It wasn't great, and he wasn't, like, the best guard, but he was one of the best. Like, you, you would want a player like Javon on your on your roster when you're playing in a, a tough con- uh, conference like SEC. No, nah, absolutely. He definitely stepped up, and that's the beautiful thing about the tournament. You know, you have these guys that, you know, you might forget about. They were redshirted, or they've transferred a couple times. They've dealt with injury or other stuff. Personally, they're not really on the court consistently, but when they get their moment, like, it's interesting because we're going to get into some big men to talk about, but we all know the college tournament comes down to the guards. Mm-hmm. Like, if you have great guard play in Alabama, that's the team we're speaking about right now. They have everything. Yeah. Great guard play, great forward play. They're physical. They're big. They have, you know, Quinterly's a, a, a senior guard. They have the, the freshman star Brandon Miller. Like, they have so many ways they can beat you. It's crazy. So they're definitely, I feel like if they don't win, in my opinion, they don't win the whole thing, that's a big upset in my mind. It's tough to say that because the field is so deep and tough, but that team is loaded. Yeah, it is. It is. And like you you said a, a great point there, freshman in Brandon Miller, and he's probably the most productive player on the roster. Like, the way Brandon Miller came in and shocked everybody, like, people expected Brandon Miller to be good, but nobody expected him to be this good. Like, he's been absolutely going nuts. And then, I don't know if you were familiar with the um, Darius Miles situation and oh, him yeah. with the gun and all that. Yeah. So, he, they threw a fork in, in his, or threw a wrench in his, in his situation, and he still found a way to overcome that, finish out the season strong. So, he's had a lot on his plate, and... I'm just I'm happy to see what he's doing, being that that's something big that happened to him in the in, in, in during the season. So I'm shocked by Brandon Miller. He's a really good player. I saw one of those NBA rumors that you know NBA GMs and obviously he's going to be a top three prospect in this year's draft. At worst, in my opinion, mm-hmm. and they're talking about they're actually impressed that he's playing so well or was playing so well while all that stuff with the case was going on. Because usually you expect something like that, you're gonna your play's gonna die down a little bit. You're gonna be too yeah. stressed out, too in your head. But NBA GMs literally said, "It's funny how that works. You think something like that would kill his draft stock, but GMs are like, nah, we're impressed by that kid. Without all the adversity he's facing, that's that's a good look for him." Yeah, and and it didn't kill his draft stock simply because of the fact, like throughout the case, he's remained innocent, kept his innocence, and even he, he even gave up his um, dash cam footage. So yep. that was a big part. Why would a criminal who committed a crime give you their dash cam footage? So he, he he's a good kid. He's a good kid. He's doing what he has to do. So That's a fact. And he's leading Alabama, the one of two one seeds remaining in the tournament. Houston's the other one. And I find myself rooting for this team because of Kelvin Sampson. Because this guy is just, he's hes kind of been through the process of, he's had some good teams, some really good teams, hasn't gotten it done. We talk about Alabama being loaded. They're loaded as well. And he they have the coach to really lead them. And shout out Quentin Grimes, a Houston alumni. Mm-hmm. Kelvin Sampson and Grimes, when he was drafted by the Knicks, talked about it, how much of a great leader he is, how he, kind of Houston taking Grimes under their wing because I, I forget what school Grimes went to initially. But he, he was dealt with injuries. Future was looking kind of murky, but Kelvin Sampson took him in, and it really worked out for him. And he's definitely a great coach, a great leader, too. And that's what you look for in the tournament, too. Not just guys that can coach, but guys that are really good dudes at the coaching position. So Bam and Houston are the one seed remaining. I want to get to some upsets, though. How about FDU? They got knocked out by FAU last night. 
But that win on Friday night against Purdue. I was crazy. Let me tell you something. 16 over a one? They were letting their nuts hang on that one. <laughs> you want to talk about upsets? This isn't necessarily upset, but what FAU did to Memphis, it kind of hurt me seeing Penny Hardaway and them go down. <laughs> yeah. And they were missing their top shooter in that game, which it showed they couldn't get no shots up. And their guard definitely went, he went down with a ankle injury, but he tried to play through it. But it hurt because in one of those like final plays, they dove for the ball and they called the ref called the jump ball when the guy was like one of the Memphis teammates was calling the timeout and the ref was right there. He didn't look at him, didn't hear him, nothing. Didn't grant them the timeout. They didn't get it. FAU won. So I mean, listen, it's it's not really upset because I was an eight nine C, but yeah, it it definitely hurt to see them go out like that. Yeah, oh, FAU. Interesting about that game. And FAU, their their guy, uh, John L. Davis. This guy, you had, did you guys see the stat line? Nah. So he put up, he was the first player in NCAA tournament history with 25 points, 10 boards, 5 assists, 5 steals in the game since steals became an official stat in 1986. That's crazy. That's he. That's my favorite part about this tournament, too, because it's great coaches, great teams, great prospects. It's a, it has everything you really want the, the in terms ball? of that. The most memorable defensive guard I could probably think of in college basketball history, maybe recently, I, you know, I'm, I'm a young boy, but Aaron Kraft, I don't know if you're familiar with Aaron Kraft from Ohio State. Oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He's literally like 16th in NCAA history in steals, and he's leads Ohio State in steals and assists. So that that when when the guard is putting up five steals, that's tough. I like that. I like I like because I'm 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 a defender. I've always been a defender, so I'm biased towards. Defensive players, I, I like when defense because defense is hard. Defense is not easy to get five steals and not fall out of a game, especially in today's game. Those refs blow a whistle for anything. Facts. So it's like to get five steals, that's really impressive. That that's the most impressive number that jumps out on that stat line for me. But I know we on FAU, but back to FDU just real quick yeah. and about that upset over Purdue. That right there was very shocking because Zach Eady has been one of the most dominant bigs. In Big Ten basketball and college basketball, regardless, and he had a great game. He did what he had to do, but his teammates that were around him just couldn't give them that last little push to surpass FDU. And FDU was firing on all cylinders. The I seen a TikTok about the their star player that led them through the game. I don't really know his name, but number eleven. If you guys know his name, I'm unfamiliar with him, but. He was just a Division II basketball player last season, and FDU's head coach is the reason why he's at FDU, hmm. and he is a Division I player. And he turns around and shows everybody why his coach is the smartest man alive for bringing him up to the Division I level. Because he was, he was going against Zach Eady the whole night, and he wasn't, he wasn't playing afraid either. He was taking it in his chest. And if it wasn't Zach Eady and it was a guard, he was killing them on the perimeter. And he was coming up making big-time shots. So, FDU, they played, I want to say they played a perfect game. But at the end of the day, I kind of still do believe that Purdue shot themselves in the foot. Oh, yeah. For if yeah. Purdue didn't shoot themselves in the foot, that game could have easily been produced. But guess what? They did. So, should have, could have, would have. They still lost. But Zach Eady, I, I feel for him. He had a great year. Yeah, Purdue took a tough L, and to your point, Franz, whenever you have a 16 over a 1 upset, and it's only the second time we've seen it in the tournament history, it's got to be a perfect storm of guys not showing up on the 1 seed and guys just competing and playing out of their mind as the 16 seed. Number 11 for FDU, Sean Moore. Mm -hmm. So he was competing. I was watching this game, and not to get some gambling takes off just randomly, but... Just watching the game, and I, it was tied for like a five-minute stretch in the second half towards the end of the game. And I'm just watching, take the seating out of it. The most impressive thing about that win is that took the seating out of it. If you didn't know who was the one who was the 16, I'm like, FDU is the better team. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're playing more cohesive on offense. They're communicating on defense. The, uh, Purdue had the biggest man on the court, but it didn't matter. Yeah. FDU was just a well oiled machine. And shout out to their head coach, Tobin Anderson. So after FDU moved on, 
before they played Purdue, he was talking in the locker room like, yo, I think we can beat these guys. Yep. The more I watch them, the more I think we could beat them. I think we can beat them. That was one of the coldest like Oof. videos. Because if they came out and lost, he would have been a laughing stock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the fact that they came out and won, that's, that's like one of the coldest moments in, in, in college basketball history, if you ask me. Like, that right there would make me want to go run through a wall from my coach. Like, that, that was tough. I, I like that. We saw it with uh, Shaheen Holloway, who I'm wearing the Kobe Bryant All-American High school jersey. He played with Kobe. He played with Kobe American in that game. game. I think he was the, the MVP of that game, too. Yeah. Yeah. Which you wouldn't expect, but. That's Queens right there. <laughs> it is. It is. And you, I bring up Holloway's name because St. Peter's last year, winning that game, he got s- snatched up immediately by a, a Power 6 school. I expect the same to happen for this Tobin Anderson out of FDU. Like, teams look at that. You not only called your shot. You beat them too and backed it up. Mm-hmm. That's impressive. So, I know they they lost to FAU and Janelle Davis, but that was a, a big time win for FDU. Sixteen over one. Damn. I mean, looking at the other teams in the Sweet Sixteen, three Big East teams. We got Creighton, got Xavier, and we got UConn. And I'm a I'm a Big East lifer, so I know Knicks is the big basketball craze in in New York, New York City, but. I feel like we just, and Michael Irvin has the phrase, we're losing recipes. Mm. I feel like we've lost a lot of recipes when it comes to college basketball in, in this area. So I bring up those Big East teams, and I know UConn actually beat Iona in the tournament. And I bring up Iona because Rick Pitino just got hired today to be the new St. John's head coach. Rick Pitino, St. John's. That just broke a couple, maybe an hour ago. And I, I remember when it was being rumored and I'm thinking about it, right? St. John's, my childhood, they would always be at Madison Square Garden. Obviously, the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden. That was like, I know the Knicks is a big thing, but college basketball in, in this area, New York, Madison Square Garden, the Big East Tournament, I feel like ever since they, um, they reshuffled things and Syracuse moved to the ACC and everything else, I'm missing that part of like just the Big East. And St. John's is a big part of that. So the fact that they're bringing in Rick Pitino, who is 70 years old, he says he feels great. He lives for coaching. Nothing, he doesn't feel slowed down. Just as a Big East fan, I'm happy about that. Yeah. Because I know Iona, he had a little three year stint. He had some controversy, some other stops. It's cute. Got him to the tournament this year. I feel like Rick Pitino belongs at a school like St. John's. I ain't going to lie to you. I think, I think it's going to definitely help take St. John's to the next level. Because I went to my first St. John's game last year, actually. And they um I like I like their playing style. I like their playing style. They have like how do I explain it? Not that five star they don't have a bunch of those five star kids who are jumping out the gym, crossing people up single handedly and doing what they gotta do. But they got those those, those tough ballers, those low key tough ballers like Posh Alexander, a New York native who went to prep school at OSL and He's a he's a good player that's bringing in like 13 points for St. John's on a daily basis. And nobody knows who Posh Alexander is. Then they got Andre Curbelo. Well, big transfer from Illinois. He was one of those four-star guys. But still, even Andre Curbelo is not uh, outplaying Posh Alexander. And Posh is less known. But that's what that, you get the point. I, that's what I like about St. John's. Like They still get the job done with local kids who are great talent. But shoot, adding Rick... They might start bringing in some big-time recruits because I know they, they did fumble one earlier. I don't know how in tune you guys are with high school basketball, but Brandon Williams, Christ the King, um, student, one of the best players in New York. His top two was like St. John's and UCLA, and he ended up obviously picking UCLA over St. John's, but that sucked that we couldn't pick him up. But St. John's, this might, this might be a, a step in the right direction towards recruitment-wise. Extremely well said. I can't wait to see how it looks and how Patino is going to put his stamp on that program. Uh, according to reports, Patino agreed to a six-year contract with St. John's. He tweeted, to all my players the last three years, all I can say is you know how much I love you. Obviously, Iona was a kind of the place where didn't really expect him to wind up, knowing Rick Patino, but definitely did his job there. Kind of brought that program up to relevance. I mean, he got them to the tournament this year. 
got him to the round of 32. I, I, I really can't wait to see how this looks. Uh, I'm, I'm just hyped up as a, a New York basketball fan. Mm-hmm. Besides the Nets, they're New Jersey. <laughs> but when, when you talk New York basketball, it don't care. I don't care if it's high school, college, professional with the Knicks, whatever gets us yeah. back to dominance, I'm with it. So Definitely. Rick Pitino is the new St. John's head coach for the next six years. Those three Big East teams that made it to the Sweet 16, Creighton, Xavier, and UConn, neither of them, sadly, will be playing at Madison Square Garden for the Sweet 16. That will be Michigan State, Kansas State, that one game, and then Tennessee and FAU being the other game. So, you know, better sweep, but at least Madison Square Garden is going to host college basketball games coming up. Yo, speaking of Creighton, right? Yeah. You guys know Doug McDermott, right? Of course. Did you guys know that Doug McDermott in college averaged for his last two seasons he averaged over 25 points and in his senior season he dang near averaged 30 like Doug McDermott was a bucket in college I literally did not notice until yesterday (laughs) because of all this March Madness talk I was on YouTube watching videos about March Madness um villains and he was one of them yeah like he was a killer that that really caught me off guard. Like Doug McDermott was like that in college. He was, if you want to talk about college legends or villains, whatever you want to say, like a JJ Redick or Adam Morrison. Doug McDermott. I mean, I remember watching him in the tournament back in 2014, his last year. I forgot who they lost to, but I'm just watching this kid like the shooting and the. He used to have a little off the dribble game too. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And, and he was like super efficient when doing it too. They uh, they brought up the stats. I think he was like shooting over forty four percent from three. Oh yeah, yeah, from three and averaging dang near thirty. So that was crazy to hear. How about this, Doug McDermott's four years in college? What he shot from three? Forty one percent, forty nine percent, forty nine percent. And on six attempts, like you said, 45%. Like, no, six attempts, bro. Like, who was shooting six threes back in the day? Not a lot of people. No. Like, that's a lot for, for at the time he's playing ball, because we got to remember, like, Steph ain't really changed the game then. Steph came, and he did what he had to do a little bit after. But six, or well, six threes a game, Doug was really him. But what, like, hurt him? And why people probably don't know too much about him is the fact that Creighton probably never got past like the second round in March Madness, which was actually kind of shocking. But yeah. other than that, individually, absolutely dog. Also, Doug McDermott, once a Nick, always a Nick. Oh, yeah. Nah, when, Nick, he had, Nick. when he was with us on the Knicks, he was doing his thing, yo. He was. I was kind of sad when we gave him up. But he was definitely a vibey player, fan favorite of mine. Came over in the Carmelo Anthony deal along with uh, Ennis Cantor mm-hmm. or Ennis Freedom. If you want to consider that now. <laughs> That's officially his name. I mean, then it's freedom. Uh, as far as the tournament, though, to wrap up, Arkansas, how about this? Beat one seed to Kansas. Eric Musselman is the goods as a head coach. He was taking a shirt off, swinging it around in the, the, <laughs> the celebration. I'm like, okay. Nobody Pop expected off that, bro. Nah. Because Arkansas season's been very wishy-washy. Like, they had a good recruiting. Everybody's expecting them to come through, take over. And then it just didn't turn out like that. But they're figuring it out in the most important time. That's all that matters. Absolutely. They're moving on. They'll play UConn on Thursday. Texas Longhorns. I saw Kevin Durant, the Longhorn alumni, tweeting about it. They'll play Xavier. The aforementioned Xavier out the Big East. UCLA and Gonzaga. Interesting. Going to face each other to round out the Sweet 16. So a lot of stuff going on. I mean, we got a couple of days off here to catch our breath, but this was a crazy weekend in terms of the tournament. Yeah, and those, those games you just listed are going to be even more exciting, I guarantee you, because those are some good matchups. And I think UCLA and Gonzaga, this is going to be a rematch because in the regular season, I'm pretty sure they played each other, and Gonzaga just beat UCLA, so UCLA should have like a fire lit under them and come back even stronger. So I'm excited to see that game right there. Amari Bailey versus Drew Timmy. Yo, did That's you match up? You see, did you ever see Amari Bailey's um poster that got called off because of offensive foul? Yeah, I seen that. Yo, that was that crazy. wasn't a foul. It though. wasn't a foul at all. He completely body bagged this kid, and they called a foul. Yo, that's what I'm saying. These refs, he be bugging, man. I hate to be a conspiracy theorist, but there will be some calls I watched, especially during college basketball. I'll just be like, 
I know your ass gambling. I mean, ain't no <laughs> yeah. way you're gonna make that call at that point. Like, why would you do that? That makes no sense, bro. After after watching the YouTube documentary about how refs would like mess with Allen Iverson on purpose and like they Rasheed were, Wallace, yeah, you know, like sliding money under the table and doing. All, I'll never trust a ref again. Like these people just be so. Irritating, like why are you messing up people? You messing up people parlays and stuff. <laughs> like people can't eat dinner because of y'all. <laughs> Shoot, hey, messing up the good game. You preaching to the choir right now. I still know a couple refs off, like just their name. Like I can't feed my family because of you. <laughs> Look what you did. I ain't gonna call him out though. Not in there. Not in there. Nah, call him out. Call him out. <laughs> Bill Scott, Foster. <laughs> Scott Foster. Scott Foster's a criminal. Yo. <laughs> oh, you a Suns fan? Too? Nah, Eric got a. Per- you gotta have a personal he beef got, with Scott yeah, Foster. Only, of, of course I do. He got something against Chris Paul. I got something against him. That's <laughs> yo. He hates Chris Paul. Yo, like some stuff be like, oh, this reference is this player. I know we had uh, Fred Van Vliet go off on Ben Taylor, one of the other referees, but Scott Foster. J- he literally got something personal against Chris Paul. Like, it's not even funny. Mm-hmm. What was it like? He lost, like, 11 straight games, ref he's, by Foster? He's, he's 0-11 in the playoffs, 0-12 in the playoffs against, like, when Scott Foster is officiating the game. See, now, i seen that stat during the 2021 finals, and I'm like, guess who's refing that? I, I don't know if it was game four or five. It was, it was game... It was game... S- Six. It was the last game. He refed that game. It was like, yeah, we already know. Like, we got no chance against this. <laughs> who's the um, Who's the ref that um, is a Celtics fan on the low? And he, oh, Eric Lewis. Oh, uh, yo, he's nah, he's wilding. Like, what's the Celtics record? They're like thirty and something, right? Something crazy, like yo, that. that's crazy. And they had a uh, because you know how NBA fans get on Twitter. They you know detectives. They should have a detective job somewhere to the way they, they find stuff out because they found this man's family all dressed in like Celtics gear mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, nah. In the kitchen t- <laughs> on, the, on the kitchen table looking like a happy family, bro. Whole time they're about to be under investigation. Like You're under surveillance. <laughs> yeah, nah, referees, it's, it'd be some, be some nasty work. But uh, Scott Foss is definitely a criminal. Remember Joey Crawford back in the day? Oh my God, he's a dirtbag. <laughs> <laughs> we don't got to talk about Tim Donaghy now either. We ain't going to talk about that. Before we move on, I want to remind everybody that you are listening to WHPC Sports Talk here on the Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Josh Mahi joined by Eric Williams, Franz Compare, and Ross Levine. Oh, the masculine urge to hit that music. Y'all know the music. <laughs> we are the New York Knicks. <laughs> you know what? Coming back from the road trip, I was hoping we get Jalen Brunson back. That happened, but you know you got the two-time MVP coming in the Garden Saturday matinee game. How many times, Ross, do we see the Knicks screw those type of games up? Yeah, Just not never, come ready to play. Yeah, they never win those one o'clock matinee games ever. Never, never do. But you know what? It's different this year. Yep. Different team. Got Jalen Brunson. Yep. Got Josh Hart. Like, I don't know, bro. Like, I, I wanted to cry. <laughs> I wanted to cry watching that game. <laughs> He's not me. I, bro, <laughs> I yo, feel him. I wanted to cry <laughs> tears of joy because the way Jalen Brunson came out the gate, we're leading. <laughs> then I wanted to cry tears of pain because <laughs> the, the Nuggets ha- are now leading 13. Then I'm crying tears of joy. Because the Knicks are letting their nuts hang and they're playing like the grown men that they are and they're finishing this game strong. It was just like, it was a roller coaster of emotions, but at the end of the day, I was just, I was proud to be a Knicks fan. I'm like, this is what I'm talking about, bro. We're finally getting what we deserve. Man, listen. Just beautifully said. And you, you, you recap that game pretty well. Hmm. We kept that game pretty well. Yes, bing bong. Because we were down 13. Uh-huh. Like, we had a great yeah. first quarter, but it wasn't looking too good in the second half. We fell apart in the se- second quarter. Just completely <laughs> fell apart. And oh, man. you're going to enjoy this, Ross, because I was watching that second quarter. Like, why is Quentin Grimes not in? Because he played well in the first quarter, but they had a lineup with, like, Randall, Hart, Brunson. Who's the other guy out there with them? Barrett. I mean, there's no shooting in that lineup. So... And you saw the Nuggets, they just double-team Randall, double-team Brunson, double-team Barrett. There was no shooting around them. That's why they kind of came back. And I was like, yo, this guy Tibbs again. Messing it up. He's going back mm-hmm. to his old ways. Because, like, I'm an emotional Knicks fan. 
I'm like not enjoying failure. I mean, I want them to be good at the, in the fourth. No, nah, I hear you. I hear you. But, like, that's how I was feeling. And then the third quarter, like Front said, they just completely take over, quickly hit a three. Hart hit a three. Grimes hit two big threes. And I thought of you, Fronts, when that happened because you were the first one saying, I need to see more from Quentin Grimes. Yeah. And, and he, he did what he had to do. He whipped out his belly and he put it to cheeks. <laughs> Simple as that. I was, pr- I was proud to see him really, like, <laughs> take his cheeks back from, like, he was yeah. he was the one. <laughs> pause on this. Big pause. But he was spanking himself. He was, like, he had his cheeks. He surrendered his cheeks to his himself. But he said, you know what? Let me get out of my head. Let me take my cheeks back from myself. <laughs> He said, let me apply the belt to Yo, the opponent now. That sounded, so, I didn't know where you were going with that, but. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. But this, I'm telling you, this is what's going on in his head. He's all in his head. Yeah. And now fact. he's finally, he's finally do- doing what he has to do. I mean, doing what he had to do. So, I was happy. How about this too? So, the Knicks, obviously, they beat the Nuggets 116-110. to 110. They held Denver scores over the final two and a half minutes of the game. They only gave up two points. Only gave up one basket over the final three minutes and 41 seconds of the game. And just to go back to everything I talk about. Well, let me actually get through the stats first. So Brunson, 24 points. Randall Barrett, 20 points, 21 points respectively. R.J. Barrett, another efficient game. Really the third straight game playing efficient basketball. 21 points on 8 of 13 from the field. Josh Hart, 13 points, 8 rebounds. They're now 12-3 and to New York Knicks since the trade deadline acquisition of Hart. Bing bong! <laughs> F your life. <laughs> now, Nikola Jokic, he's in the running for a third straight MVP still. But 24-10-8, that's what you expect. But I got to shout out Mitchell Robinson. And we talked about him last week because of the Snapchat and everything. It was weird. It was random. It was stupid. But he forced a, a three-time MVP in the six turnovers. And that's it's everything I talk about. If the Knicks want to be our daddy's Knicks and those 90 bully ball Knicks, uh-huh. you can't have stars like LeBron James all those years, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry all these years coming to the garden, putting on a showcase. No, 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 not no more. When you come into the garden and the Knicks could be the the seventh seed right now as far as. You know everything else, but I need this to be the case no matter how good or bad they are. When you come into the garden, you gotta expect to fight. Jason Tatum, like I said a couple weeks ago, he quit on the garden floor. He said, Give me a tech ref, I'm out. Nikola Jokic, maybe he expected to, you know, the Nuggets are kind of sliding here. My team isn't playing up to snuff. But, you know, Madison Square Garden, I'm gonna put on the show and remind everybody, like, this is a two time MVP. Yeah, he almost went for a quadruple double. Congratulations. Yeah, man. yeah. With them turnovers. <laughs> Word. <laughs> With them turnovers. I Let mean, him keep batting those stats. Shoot. And Julius Randle still played okay. Not great. Yeah. Okay. I I am a little concerned with him in terms of his three point shooting. That concerns me a little bit. With Randle, he's he's kind of fallen off a little bit with the three. But aside from that, I mean, their 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 defense did a good job against them in terms of containing them. They didn't sl- like they slowed them down enough. Like they were never gonna fully stop them because Denver just that good of an offense. Right. But they contained him in a way. I mean, 110 points. That's not bad to give up. And like their the fourth quarter defense was one of the best defense I've seen all season from the Knicks. Oh. 19 points given up in the fourth quarter, and the Knicks' offense wasn't even that great. I mean, they only they, they scored a lot of their points in the final couple of minutes. So like that was. That was really good, and Julius Randle made you know one of the probably the biggest shot, you know that that the step back tough two pointer. So that was that was big. You said it, Ross. Denver Nuggets second in the league in terms of offensive efficiency. They're the second highest scoring team in the <laughs> NBA. The New York Knicks on the Garden floor hold held that team to under twenty points in winning time. And I got a shout out again, Mitchell Robinson. You know he was bitching on Snapchat, <laughs> but you know what you do that. He was apologetic about it before the game. You got to come to play when it's your time to get on the court. And he did that. So I got to, you know, I, I'm still not happy with it, but I got to give him a little bit of credit for what he did in that fourth mm-hmm. quarter. Yeah. And my favorite play of the game is the last play of the game where Jalen Brunson blows past the Nuggets defense as mm-hmm. if nobody is on the court. It looks like he's running past mannequins because he is the light skin flash. And then as he <laughs> proceeds to be the light skin flash, he 
He spares a Nuggets defender. Instead of laying him and embarrassing him, he throws a lob from the free throw line to Mitchell Robinson and gives him some love. The Knicks fans roar. Madison Square Garden is lit. Knicks players are lit. They're letting their nuts hang. And it was just a great moment. Like I said, I wanted to cry, bro. Front, you, you you talking you talking about this play? You talking about this play right here? Brunson driving in the front court. Brunson throws it up. Robinson throws it down. Six point lead with 24 seconds remaining. Timeout, Denver. Yo, you just hear that crowd behind the play. Oh man, that crowd. That's <laughs> that's Madison Square Garden right there. Yes, Josh, it's that play right there. And you know. <sighs> I'm sad Nico's not here because his Rangers, by the way, and, and Ross, your Rangers, they're doing the same things. 13 goals this weekend. Yeah. What's going on in the Garden? I don't it, know what's going on. It went from like the two worst teams at the gar- at home in, in their in their leagues to now like one of the best in their leagues. If you really think about it, I mean, the Knicks are like what are they seven and one in the last eight home games, yep. and the ra- and the Rangers are you know they're they're playing great. Like they won ten out of the last twelve or something. So like. At home, so like they're they're just been a, a switch. I mean, also like probably one of my favorite plays of the game. This was early in the game, before like the second quarter happened. Unfortunately, um, a Hardenstein block that was just oh my <laughs> god, that was a great block. Yo, Hardenstein, he's been good. <laughs> yes, oh, like Hardenstein. I like Hardenstein a lot. Like I remember when people were calling him the Eastern Conference Jokic, <laughs> and then he comes through and shows Jokic what is what it feels like Bing to get bong. bullied. He blocks. He gets the block, right? That was one of my favorite plays from Hardenstein. That's right. And then do you guys recall the play where he's about to do like a dribble handoff at the top of the key and quickly spins, and then he drives down the left side of the lane, and he <laughs> uh, get a nice little layup action in there, you know what I'm saying? He was looking like a guard out there. Yo, and it just goes to show you, and this is kind of an aside on the MVP conversation. Now, I enjoy Jokic's game. I enjoy Giannis's game. I enjoy Embiid's game. But... Giannis and Embiid do something very well that Jokic doesn't. Now, Jokic is the top two offensive center of all time, but he struggles defensively. Mm -hmm. I like Jalen Brunson. I like seeing Jalen Brunson go at Jokic. I like seeing R.J. Barrett go at Jokic. And I got to give R.J. Barrett credit. He's kind of cutting the threes down, and he's becoming hyper-efficient when it comes to finishing in the paint. That's what that's really what we need. Yep. RJ Barrett, if you listen to the show, <laughs> I don't need you to be a superstar like a John Morant. I just need you to be a, a hyper efficient third option three and D guy. That's exactly that's what all we were, need you to do. You guys were saying that a little while ago. I think it was you and Ross. You guys were saying just like take the tools, let the threes open up, but really get those tools and you're gonna put together a great game. Just that's all we need out of RJ Barrett. And like we said, another great win for the Knicks. They're now 42 and 30. They're the fifth seed in the East ahead by two and a half games of the Brooklyn Nets. You know the vibe. Stand clear of the closing doors. <laughs> Let's go, Knicks. <laughs> Moving on to the Nets. So they hosted the Nuggets right after the Knicks. <laughs> and it's interesting that that happened because I'm watching, and we just said Nicole Jokic was kind of uncomfortable. In that fourth quarter against the Knicks. Right. I'm watching him against the Nets like, yo, he's he's like in his element. He's doing like off the backboard hook passes to Michael Porter Jr. He's he's, uh, he's Michael Porter Jr. is dunking on his own teammate. Like they're yeah, putting uh, yeah, they're, they're clowning the Nets, and I'm just like <laughs> it's funny that the the some of the Nets fans were telling me, Oh, we're still gonna be a better team than the Knicks. Man, <laughs> I don't it, know who said that? I, I I'm just watching like the evidence is right there. Like wow. The, the Nuggets were in jail in the garden. They come to the Barclays Center and they're having shoot arounds and layup lines. Hmm, I, right? I don't know what's going on. What's right. going on, Nets fans? The, I don't know. The, the Nets actually got closer in that game. It was like down to seven at one point. Like they had a twenty-two point lead, Denver that would cut to seven. Yeah, like, but you know the, the Denver Nuggets were just fooling around. Yeah. Like, yo, this is I, an I easy know. Dub. When, I know. When but your I, when your owner gets bullied around by little Kyrie Irving and Twitter finger Kevin Durant, y- you have a shriveled nut owner. <laughs> who can't manage his organization, where's the success going to come from? That's blue pill right there. He's he's a blue pill male. You can't, you can't Damn, seek success. Damn, Joe Sy catching strays. You can't seek success with this man at your front office. Of course Jokic is going to come through and drag his nuts all over Barclays yo, Center. Yo. Like, yo. That, that, that's, Not wrong, though. Like, literally. Like, when you come to MSG, we don't let that happen. Because you better pick your nuts up at the front door. We do the nut dragging over here. 
<laughs> a lot of nut dragging going on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's how I got to get the point across because people don't be hearing me. I don't, they don't be hearing me for real. They, you be spitting. One thing about you, you be spitting when it comes to New York basketball. That's without a doubt. The Nets, they uh, yeah, they lost to Denver 108-102. Now, the Nets had defeated the Nuggets in Denver. Fluke win, but 122 to 120, <laughs> they got it done. I don't, I don't mean to keep throwing shots, but it's, it's just easy. <laughs> Like I said, the Nets now trail the Knicks by two and a half games for fifth in the East. And the interesting thing about Brooklyn, they host the Cavs at Barclays Center on Tuesday and Thursday. Hmm. And I believe the Knicks are only two and a half games behind the Cavs. So I'm like, yeah, I, I guess, for the Nets, I, guess, I, guess. I got to root for the Nets yep. for two days. Even though they won't come through because we're rooting for them. Oh, don't say that. that. Don't say that's that. always. I mean, I'm sorry. I, be I'm, no, no love for Brooklyn Bridges. <laughs> the, he's, he's nice. Is, no, he's a good player. Yeah. He is, and, and I actually I like the Nets a lot more now than when they had the superstars. So facts too. You know, so I'm not I'm not ripping them, but Mikel Bridges or um, Cam Thomas, they cannot be your best players on a championship team. It does yeah. not work. I mean. Yeah. Cam Thomas is not even that good now. If you really think he barely plays. If you really watch, if you watch the net games, he doesn't play. Chuck Vaughn does not play him. So I don't know what happened. I don't, I, he was like from like he had like a couple of great games, like amazing. Three straight games. forty point games for Cam yeah. Thomas. Yeah, he had like amazing games. I mean, Vaughn does not play him. I mean, it's funny. Ever since Vaughn got the extension, he does not play the guy. Before he got the extension, he plays the guy. I don't know. That's weird. His rotations are weird. Yeah, Jock Vaughn, I mean, he's trying to figure it out. He's got a deep roster. Yeah. Cam Thomas, I definitely think, should be getting more playing time just because, you know, you can't bottle that type of scoring ability in. You know what's funny about Cam Thomas? I actually met him. Really? Last year, yeah. Where'd you meet him? We were doing the Nets, Long Island Nets Media Day over in Westbury at the Yes We Can Center, mm, okay. the community center. Mm -hmm. So we're walking in the building. And I see this like six two, six three guy walking out, and you know I kind of do a double take. I'm like, oh, it's Cam Thomas. So I'm like, yo, what's good, Cam? And he's like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing funny, bro. Ain't nothing funny. Ain't nothing funny. <laughs> when it comes to Cam Thomas, I, I love him as a player, though. <laughs> Hopefully, he can get more burn in the rotation. But the Nets, they're. Uh, I mean, Kyrie and KD left them in fourth place. They've dipped all the way to sixth. They're only one game ahead of Miami for seventh now. Mm -hmm. So, yo, speaking of speaking of Nets, the only valid Nets organization that might be sturdy in New York is the Long Island Nets, because they're <laughs> yo, yo, they are number one in the, in the Eastern Conference, and I did not know that. So, I might start tuning into the G League a little bit more. And supporting them, but the Brooklyn Nets, mm -mm. Well, you they're, can actually go to those games for free. Yeah, yeah. WHBC, we can get free tickets for those games. Yeah, so I might have to. I yeah. might have to start going there, pop out, see what <laughs> they're about. Because shoot, <laughs> that's the only valid Nets organization in New York as of right now. Hey man, they listen. They could still make the playoffs, but it's looking kind of slow for them yeah. right now compared to the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, we know it's a Knicks. I city. mean, you can't compare them to greatness. It's kind of unfair. Nah, I'm nah. Sorry. We didn't ask to be this way though. We did it. I mean, look, I don't even feel bad because it was all sweet when KD and Kyrie were on the team and they were talking about, oh, the Knicks aren't fun anymore. Yeah. They're not the fun team in, in, in New York anymore. And then, and then oh, Trey Young, I'm not going to lie, Trey Young, he does what he does to us and everybody's laughing at us. And he goes, oh, you're hype after one game. Da -da 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 -da. But listen, what can we say now? He hasn't done it in a minute, though. <laughs> He's been pretty mid as of late. Oh, Trey Young, right? Yeah. He yeah. has. Bro, the Hawks, the Hawks in general. Are, they're not good. The touch. They're not they're good. I see. I seen something saying the Hawks have been one game within five hundred for the <laughs> past twenty five games. Like, yeah, they're, if there's one word to describe the Hawks organization as of right now, caca. Like, <laughs> that's what it is. Like, doo doo. They're very bad. They're they're not <laughs> even like they're not even mid. They're not good. <laughs> like, yo, what does Shaq say about them? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> they ain't taking they even taking flight lately. I don't know what's going on, Shaq. No. What's going on, baby? Uh, they play one great half. Outstanding. <laughs> They're a great one half team. No. They're outstanding. But for two game for two halves, no. Not Yo. Good. So they were up their last game, the Hawks. They were in San Antonio yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Um uh, this is too good. I couldn't I know it's a local show and we have to get to the World yeah. Baseball Classic, but I can't ignore this. So the Hawks got outscored 
67 to 35 in the second <laughs> half. Oh my God. By the Spurs. Trey Young Spurs. went 4 15 from the floor, 9.6 assists. DeJounte Murray in his return to San Antonio had 22 points. Mind you, the DeJounte Murray, that was better than Jalen Brunson. Ooh. 22 points on 25 shots. Like, come on, bro. That's bot activity. I better not hear anybody utter the words DeJounte Murray is better than Jalen Brunson ever again. Hmm. Well, they got, he got Zhanya, though. I mean. <laughs> It's got to be a dub. And somewhere. they just gave the bag to Boban, not uh, right. That's his name. Oh, uh, um, Bogdanovich or oh, whatever. Bo- yeah, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Yeah, they gave hmm. him the bag. <laughs> <laughs> they gave him the bag, and they suck. But they gave him sixty-six million. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, yo, it was hefty. Uh, they doubling down on. They out there giving you money to be trash. <laughs> they they <laughs> doubling me- down on ass. <laughs> Let me sign up for Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> Shoot, they gave me a million to just be there. Yeah, the Hawks, they, uh, it's funny. I bring up that game, and I promise I will move on to baseball, but I watched that game against the Warriors that they, they hosted Golden State. I can't bring up NBA basketball without bringing up the defending champions. The Golden State Warriors are 29-7 and at home. Yo. They're 7-29 and on the road. Yo, what? I don't know. What kind of championship happens is that? I don't know, bro. Did the, did the Jordan Poole Draymond punch mess them up that much? You know, I was just thinking about it. I'm like, mm, maybe that's what did it. Maybe it threw off all the connection. Uh, who knows? Yo, it, it's crazy because Draymond Green, he'll punch out Jordan Poole, and then everyone's up expecting an apology or something, and Draymond Green just hops up. What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. <laughs> just Wait, yo, Draymond Green has single-handedly probably destroyed the Warriors organization. He punches hey. Jordan Poole in the face. Then he wants to play mid. Then he Come, podcasts about it. Then he podcasts about it. Beef with Dylan Brooks. Then Dylan proceeds Brooks. to lose to Dylan Brooks on multiple occasions. <laughs> this is very bad from Draymond. He's not starting off his 2023 the right way. Like, this is very bad. How d- What's going on with the Warriors? They just can't seem to play like the Warriors. I don't know. Away from Golden State. And Clay's fingers are getting tired. He keeps throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, like, come on, bro. Like, you can't use that as the excuse every time. Like, you can because it's very he great a- yeah. achievement. But at the same time, it's like, come on, boss. Yeah, record on the road is disgusting. I need to fix whatever. Curry's out here dropping 50 and taking an L? That's crazy. Yo, he I might fight. This season. Oh, my God. Bro, he did it in he, Phoenix. Yeah, he did. Oh, That's crazy, bro. I thought he was going to drop 60 that game. He, Curry, that, Curry's really the goal, bro. He's the – Steph Curry is the Maserati in the – uh the, in the, hood. the yeah, yeah 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 just sitting in the the rundown garage like that that's <laughs> Steph Curry on the, on the oh, Warriors man. this year that's funny but you know what let's finally move on to the World Baseball Classic so before I get to the USA games and they looking damn good right now hmm. so you had this happen oh boy yeah they they had this, Ross they did it they I um, know this sucks. Edwin Diaz obviously got hurt, but Puerto Rico, they had Edwin Diaz's brother Alexis come out to obviously Edwin Diaz's walk out or walk out song with the New York Mets. Narcos, Timmy Trumpet. Yeah. Uh, he proceeded to walk the bases loaded and take the L. Great so. job. Great job. Yeah, I- I'm turning that song down because the vibes aren't good with that song. No. They just, they're not good right now. It was a yeah. banger. Oh, that's why I was bopping my head, but. It was. It's, it's just. It's. It's over. It's over. They don't even have. They have like no closer. I mean, Robertson. I guess is he'll be okay. But I just saw his stats, and he's had a great career, by the way. But so I'm not trying to say he's gonna be bad. I think he'll be fine. Last year he was 20 for 28 in save opportunities. Like that's that's not who you want as your closer all season. I hope. He, I hope it took like a month. And like that's it, or like two months, yeah. like maybe two months, and you trade for a closer. This this is not good. Well, here's the thing: because if it's only two months for David Robinson as the Mets closer, he's got to be pitching pretty bad because oh. they're giving him the job to kind of see how he does and and everything else. So if he's out after two months, that's going to be no. Nah, I, I he'll be better bad. than that. He'll, listen, he's a veteran; he's used to it, but. Yeah, you don't feel great. I mean, listen, any if it was anybody not named Diaz, you're not gonna feel great. But it's, no. I, it they're gonna guys have to step up. They gotta score a lot of runs. That's 
Listen, if there's a one run lead going to the ninth inning, you can't I'm not gonna feel good. You can't. Not now. You can't feel good now. It's just a shame because I mean they he has that great year, Edwin Diaz, and they signed him to a five year, hundred and two million dollar contract. And he is literally the most, in my opinion, I know there's a lot of great players in baseball but when it comes to just being box office, being electrifying. There's no more electrifying player than Edwin Diaz to me in baseball. Yeah, it's it. So it sucks. It's, uh, it's, it sucks. That, that's that's all you can say. I mean, it's it. I'm, I think they could. They still are a good team. The Mets are still a good team, even without Diaz. As sad as that is, um, but it, guys have to just step up. Like Adam Vino's got to close out games if need be. Um, they Buck did say about a committee, closed by committee. That's very possible that they could do that. Um, and you know, we'll see. I I don't think that's sustainable. Personally, I think they're gonna have to get a closer at some point. But I kept hearing about Zach Britton. You know, he's doing a showcase yeah. for a lot of teams. That's something I would look at. He's not the same pitcher, but I would look at him. I mean, Just as like a deaf piece, he's a right hand. I mean, sorry, left handed pitcher. The Mets haven't had a lot of good ones like that in a while. So we'll see. It's tough, though. Like I said, Alexis Diaz, Edwin Diaz's brother, a big part in Puerto Rico's shocking loss to Mexico, 5 to 4. Now, USA, the vibes are a little better, and, and thanks to uh, Trey Turner. 0 mm-hmm. 2. Turner to left field. USA, Trey Turner hit that grand slam with USA trailing Venezuela 7-5 with one swing of the bat. It was 9-7. And for anybody that wants to say the World Baseball Classic don't matter or it should be moved or it should be, you know, whatever else, Mm -hmm. Trey Turner called the grand slam the biggest hit of his career and said that game's atmosphere was the loudest he had ever heard. So, I mean, the players, you, you haven't seen one player say, yeah, the World Baseball Classic is just whatever. Like we, we just well, do it. Well, it's for their country. That's why. That's it's, why it's a big thing. It's a yeah. huge the thing. The World Cup of Baseball. Huge thing. Huge thing. It's, it's World Cup. You can talk about Olympics. I know Corey brought up the track angle on Friday. When you're playing for your country or you're you're competing for your country against other countries, that's a huge deal. Yeah. And USA is definitely taking that in stride. They beat down Cuba in the semis yesterday, fourteen to two. <laughs> Trey Turner became the first player. Since Ken Griffey Jr. in 2006, that's great company, to hit mm-hmm. home runs and back-to-back at-bats in the World Baseball Classic. So he's putting on a show. Yeah, he's yeah. putting bats to cheeks. Bat to, I like that, yeah. bats to cheeks. He's right. going crazy. The, just the one quick quick note on, like, just when it comes to Diaz, just for, like, a quick second, Edwin Diaz, as a fan of the Mets, quick, just quick note. Are you more heartbroken by Diaz getting hurt or letting DeGrom walk? That's a tough one. I'm more heartbroken by I'm more heartbroken by Diaz personally. I would agree with that. And it's weird to say because he's a closer and one's a starter, but I, losing Diaz sucks. I'm not. Uh, I know there are some Mets fans that are still upset about DeGrom, but it's hard for me personally to get mad at a guy leaving who clearly didn't want to be here. Like, if I'm spending energy on Jacob DeGrom, he didn't want to be in New York. No, he didn't. He left a 101-win team. Like, yeah, he didn't want to be here. Yeah. So I, I, can't, I can't give my energy to that. No. Nah, I here's, I don't think even the Mets were even that heartbroken by letting him go. Like, I mean, I'm sure they were disappointed, but they weren't, like, heartbroken by it. They were kind of like, yeah, he didn't want to be here. We tried, but, you know, he was getting hurt the last few years. That, that's another thing, too. Like, you didn't see him pitch very much the last couple of years or, like, the last two years. So, like, that's why maybe it's – you kind of forget maybe a couple of years ago. So, like, that's – and also, I, as sad as this may be, because he was still a great pitcher for the Mets, well, all I'll always remember is he, he did not pitch well down the stretch of this season, you know. He didn't. He did not. He gave up a bunch of home runs, so – and he didn't go deep into games. So, that that's – I, I – the Mets made the right choice by going with uh, Verlander. So, yeah, I mean Verlander. I know he's an older pitcher, but he he's on the field. He's dependable. He just came off a Cy Young uh, a trophy. So, 
yeah. I think the Mets made a good trade off in that situation. Yeah, definitely. They, they did. Verlander was like the Yankees kryptonite, yo. <laughs> we couldn't get we couldn't anything hit off against Verlander. The Astros as a whole. I mean, I don't know when it's going to stop just the Astros' domination over the Yankees. Because yeah. the Yankees, that's really their only obstacle. Literally. I might have to go investigate them myself. Like, yeah. throwing some <laughs> shades, trench coat, fedora. <laughs> <laughs> Get up in the facility and see what's going on over there. Yeah, cause I don't. It's it's crazy that the Yankees could have been won another World Series. They haven't won since 2009, but the last couple of years, 2017, 2019, 2022, last year, Astros, 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 get them out of here, go back home to the Bronx. Like it's crazy. Dominant regular season team. Aaron Judge has 62 home runs, and we leave him out there hanging. Like not. I'm not going to blame it all on him because he can't do it all himself. Other players were just not stepping up. I mean, I guess you could say Harrison Bader. Harrison Bader's getting solo home runs. We can't execute when guys are in position of scoring, and that was a big theme for the Yankees last year. Yeah, we hit a lot of home runs. We were a home run hitting team, but what are you going to do when guys are on base? Are you going to get those singles? Are you going to bring those doubles in to yeah. get those guys from second base to home plate? That's what matters so, at the end of the day. To me, they're, they're, the Yankees are not they're not built for today's game in the sense that they, they rely way too much on the home run, yeah. and that hurts, I think. so. But, you know, they're, they continually they, – they, it looks like this way with Rodon already. He's it, hurt uh, again. That uh, was another injury pitcher. Ross, that was the main yeah. concern because they bring in Rodon and they have this rotation, but they also have guys like Domingo Herman. We already saw one of their guys. I don't know why the name's escaping me, but he went down. Severino. Severino. Yeah. They, they have a very, the Yankees have a great rotation on paper, but it's a very injury prone rotation. Mm-hmm. And not to mention, Garrett Cole can give home runs. It's very, you know, yes. he's, yeah. he's a, he can he's gonna have a lot of home runs with the Yankees. And ever since I'm telling you, ever since those sticky stuff, they, ever since they banned that, he's not the same pitcher. He's a good pitcher, but not the not the same pitcher you thought you got with, with Houston. Yeah. Hey, we gonna see what happens as we you know the Yankees camp and the Mets camp proceeds. But I mean, who we got in the final of the World Baseball Classic or the semifinal? Who USA is gonna face? Mexico or Japan? Who, who are we thinking? I'll say Mexico. You going with the upset? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with Japan just because I love Ichiro Suzuki and he was a former <laughs> Yankee, so I don't really know too many Mexican baseball players. Nah, nah, me neither. Me neither. I, you know what? I want to I wanna see Shohei Otani. I think he's going to be on the field today. Future Met. Yep. Get it done. Yo, if y'all, if y'all get that, I might become a Mets fan. <laughs> oh, you going to pull Charlie? I'm lying. <laughs> All right, I look like Antonio it. to you. You know I'm loyal to my squad. <laughs> How are you going to catch a stray in the final minute? <laughs> well, whatever. We are done for today's edition of WHBC Sports Talk. For Eric Williams, France Compare, and Ross Levine, this is Joshua Imahi thanking you once again for listening to WHBC Sports Talk and the voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHPC.